Hi, everybody. It's Dr. Lori, the PhD Antiques Appraiser. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. Everything's unscripted. I don't know what objects are coming. My guests are here. Let's get started. Will you hold up your objects, please? Let's see what you've got. Okay. Let's see what you've got. Well, let's start with this duck. I have some ducks here too. Maybe ducks are the theme of the day. <laughs> Hi. Hi, what's your name? Trisha. Hi, Trisha. Where are you calling from, hon? Buffalo. Buffalo, New York. Great. Yeah. It's not cold there yet, right? <laughs> no, but I grew up in Maine, so. Oh, you're used to that. Oh, yeah. I like cold though. Cold's okay. Show yeah. me what you have. Can you back up some so we can see the whole object in your camera frame and a little bit more? There you go. All right. Tell me a little bit about it while you hold it there. Well, I saw him the other day at a Goodwill and just thought it was super ugly. <laughs> ugly is the first word of value. You've heard me say it. <laughs> but yeah, in the first, and I grabbed it and I just I ran with it because I I knew how different it was and how okay. unique it was. Okay. So I I haven't found much about it. Can I see the other side? It looks like someone painted it, which I'm mad about. Yeah. Can I see the underside? Yeah, too bad. It was yeah. a nice piece of folk art, but you know what I think? I think somebody was getting it primed to do something else on the wings. Yeah. No, well, I, it's, it looks mother of pearl. Do you see yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, I do see it. So it's inlaid. Those little elements are inlaid. Right. Um, and that does look like, it does have a pearlescence to it. Yeah, it does look like, I would think it's probably bone. Um, and also it's got an Asian feel, you know, it's got that, the bands around the neck, right? Those those bands around the neck. And then it's got yeah. some metal, metal elements like the beak and the eye and such. Yeah. So I think it's Asian. Uh, I'm sorry that it's sort of that two-tone. So you think they painted it over, unfortunately. I still yeah. think it's kind of nice. How much did you pay for it? Oh, five. Oh, five. Five is yeah. good. I would probably say 75 okay. on the resale market. Um, I have to say that the contrast of the way they painted it and the, the wing elements, you know, not as good design as I might have hoped. Right. I'm sure it dates to the middle after World War II, 1950s, 1960s. Oh, so. super. super. Yeah. And my question of the day, brownies or chocolate chip cookies? Oh, middle brownie. Okay. Brownies, brownies. Great. <laughs> nice to see you. Thank you. You too. So I should have said blondies. I said chocolate chip cookies. I meant blondies or brownies. Uh, but uh, anyway, so she picked brownies. Uh, blondies are fun too. When you're looking at objects that are of a different culture, like Asian objects, what to look for. First of all, in the 20th century, you'll see a lot of the mixed media pieces coming out of Asia. So brass, which is connected also to maybe a, a bone element or um, marquetry, you know, that's inlay with bone. You also will see, of course, wood and other uh, mixed media elements. So in Asian pieces, like sculptural pieces like that, it's really more of a decorative art piece than a sculpture. You're going to look for mixed media. But that was a nice piece. It's too bad they painted it over. Sometimes when they try to enhance it, it doesn't do a lot for the object. My guests are here. If you'll hold up your objects, let's see what you've got. So it looks like we've got a paperweight, it looks like a bowl, and it looks like a piece of ceramic. So let's see what this white bowl is with the with the decorative <laughs> element on the inside. <clears throat> What's that? Hi, this how are you? Hi, Dr. Lori. Hi. This you're is a Shimano bowl that used to be, um, it was handed down from my mom. It was my eating bowl when I was little. Okay, can you put it in front of the camera and tell me your name and where you're calling from? Gail Tinkham, I'm calling from Eugene, Oregon. Okay, and can you put it right in front of the camera because you're moving it here and moving it there and the camera's not getting it. Okay, oh, okay, so it's your baby bowl. It was a bowl yeah. for oatmeal and such, right? Yeah. Or farina, did you like that, farina? No. <laughs> no, no, cream of wheat. <laughs> yeah, that I did right. like. So can I see the mark on the bottom? <clears throat> Oops. Mm. Okay. Okay. All right. So pretty good condition. No scrapes, no chips. Is no. any of the, uh, is any of the decoration coming off? No. Okay. So value no. on that piece is going to be just about 15 to $17, somewhere in that neck of the woods, under 20 bucks, but you probably keep it because it based on actual sales records or similar pieces have sold, but you're probably keeping it because of course it's sentimental to you. 
And this is a point about the market. So if she's keeping it because it's sentimental to her, it doesn't get onto the market. So there's not an opportunity for the value to go up too high, right? So you're starting to see that. There are people who collect these pieces, but again, oftentimes they don't get out of your family because then your kids say, oh, that was mom's baby bowl. We don't want to sell it and so on and so forth. So I would say under 20 bucks, but it's a nice piece. So a blondie or a brownie, which do you like? A uh, blondie. A blondie. Yeah, I like a blondie too, I have to say. I'll take any <laughs> chocolate, but I like a blondie. I like a blondie. Yes. Uh, nice Thank to you. see you. You too. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. So a lot of things I want you to think about with respect to the market. So first of all, what type of collectibles are there? You know, reselling tips, thinking things like, you know, if you're if you're understanding this idea of how to resell certain objects, categories are important. Sets are important as well. That's what we're looking for. And of course, you can always support the channel and you can always support the channel with super chat, super stickers and also by sharing the channel. Uh, if you share the channel, of course, that will help as well. And sharing the channel is very easy. You can just do it easily. You can share the binge link. You can just share the channel. You can share individual videos, whatever you like. So I'm glad to see that you're here. And I'm glad that you're enjoying, of course, all the videos that we've been putting together for you. I've been hearing great responses to a lot of the recent videos, too. So thanks for that. So let's see. What have we got? Let's take this pink and white. It looks like sort of a bulbous vase here. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. I'm Jamie from Minnesota. Hi, Jamie. Nice to see you. Look at this. That's pretty. So it's reticulate. So it's punched out or cut out in certain areas. It looks like it's ceramic and it looks like it's hand painted, sort of blue and pink with the roses. Is there a mark on the bottom, Jamie? It says Zolinski. Um, <clears throat> it says Zolinski on the bottom, huh? Yep. Zolinski pick. pick. Go ahead, honey. Um, Pecos, and then it also says um, Austria, Hungarian, Hungarian. Yeah, so it probably says Austria, Hungary on mm -hmm. it. And then yeah. if you'll notice on the underside, what she was showing us was in fact the glaze. Do you see how the gla the underside is glazed as well? It's usually a higher quality element when you see the underside being glazed too. So, hey, Jamie, right? Jamie? Yep. Yep. Yeah, Jamie, tell me, honey, um, did you subscribe to my newsletter? Yep. Okay, great. It was easy to do, right? You just went to the website, put in your email, and then you just get it in your mailbox, right? That's right. Great. You're so, priceless. <laughs> yeah, oh, you're so sweet. Yeah, my I don't know where my mug is here, but yes, you're I'm pri we're, you're all priceless. You gotta buy those <laughs> mugs too. But a couple of things, um, and I get compensation if you buy the mugs or any products from the website. How'd you acquire this piece? Um, I bought it at an online auction. Um it was only going for two. $2.50, that is long, as well as this. Oh, um, so you got two things for $2.50? I got like five, five things for, for, and I couldn't see it go for that cheap, so I just bid on it, it all for five bucks. I got like six, seven pieces of nice, uh, but I thought it was I, See, I think that's great, right? Yeah. So did you kind of get a little rush? Like, geez, I'm going to get all this stuff for five yeah, bucks. Yeah, when I got there, especially because it was all like behind the counter. And I was like, oh, I didn't even go check it out before I, I bid on it. I just couldn't see it go so cheap. So nobody all bid me. At, it was $5. So I, I just I seen how beautiful and bigger than I thought. So, so I'm, I'm, I want to follow you, Jamie. So you said it was behind the counter, but you said that it was an online auction. So have um, you seen it? Yeah, next door. Yeah, right in my town, we have a big auction house. So okay. it's a big, kind of big, I guess. So. so you had seen it at the auction house and then it was you're, it was available online for you to bid on it. I normally would, but this time I just checked the online auction. And if I like something, I'll go in and check it. But yeah. Oh, so, I didn't so, you're, so you're doing it two ways. That's great. That's great. So I would say value, first of all, time period for this probably dates to the 1960s. This is not an old piece. It's not particularly early 20th century, probably mid 20th century. And it looks like no chips, no cracks, no problems with it. Uh, no, just the crackling or the crackling. Crazy. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah, vocab. It's just it basically it's just a word that that basically indicates that the glaze is starting to crack. It usually is a result of temperature and humidity changes. And it's very typical on most pieces of ceramic over time, older ceramic. I think it's a beautiful piece too. I like the form very much. I like, of course, the, the decorative element. And then inside, you know, you're gonna be able to see through too. I like it. I would say value on it about seven, about $65. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> you're welcome, hon. Based on actual sales records. Hey, a blondie for you, or do you like just a straight old brownie? 
I like brownies. <laughs> yeah, brownies. Brownies are nice. Oh, do you put now? Let me ask you this: Do you put anything on top of them, like nuts or or frosting? Or I'm a twin sister. Think? She likes nuts. I I don't like anything. So <laughs> yeah, I don't like textures in my food. I like no. it to be the same, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> nice, nice to see you, Jamie. Thanks. Minnesota calling in. This is Ask Dr. Lori. It's nice to be with all of you. Of course, Ask Dr. Lori live. We're live here. And of course, um, you can always check out my website, all different information and all kinds of services for you. Video calls are always popular too on our website. So, well, let's see. Let's look at this piece. Let's look at that brooch. Can we look at this brooch? Little print pin there. How are you? Good. Hi, my name's Lori. What's yours? <laughs> Charity. Charity? Mm -hmm. Hi, Charity. Where are you calling from? Ohio. Can you speak up for me? Oh, yeah. Sorry. I can turn the volume up a little louder. Yeah, I'm in Columbus, Ohio. Okay. So show me, how did you acquire this nice brooch? I got it at a thrift store. And can I see the back? Can you hold it a little closer to the camera? I think it may actually be a, a necklace. So it, oh, so it looks like a pendant? Uh, did it, does it have a pin at all? No, it has like the loophole for like a necklace maybe. Okay, so it's a pendant. Okay. Yeah. And and judging from the back of it, it looks like it's a mid-20th century piece of costume jewelry. From where you are in that position right now, can you turn it so we can see the front? Yep. And Charity, have you had video calls with me? Um, I've been on here twice before. Okay, but a video call with me personally, because a lot of people don't want to do this. You know, they 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 kind of say, "Oh, I'd like to have more of a one-on-one -on -one with you, Dr. Lori. It's private, and I can get things evaluated. I can be there for with you for an hour or two hours or only five or ten minutes. It's up to you. Video calls are easy to book. You can do it right at drlorivee.com. I like this piece a lot. I like that faux mobe pearl in the middle. I also like, in fact, the quality of the colored stones, and they, of course, are crystal." I think it's very nicely done. I would expect that it's from one of the better New York costume jewelry designers like a Kramer or a Listener or Coro. Value on it, about $50. How much did you pay? Where did you get it? $3 at the thrift store. Excellent. $3 at the thrift store is great. Based on actual sales records, that's right. Pendants and brooches will typically go in that in that time, in that value range, depending on, of course, their quality, condition, and materials. That one doesn't look like anything's missing from it. It looks like it's in beautiful condition. But again, probably the 50s, 60s. I'd probably, because of the back, put it more into the 1960s rather than the okay. late 50s. Okay. So, great. Hey, blondies or brownies? Brownies all day. Brownies all day. <laughs> nice to see you. Thanks for Thanks. calling in from Ohio. The question of the day is a lot of fun. I like the question of the day. When you're looking at, at costume jewelry, you know, um, I do special classes and such and all kinds of events. You can watch, look for, you can look for those at um, drlorev.com at my, my, my um, specials and shop page or my events page. But um, what I was going to say was last night in one of the uh, classes, someone asked me what costume jewelry designers they should be looking for now. And I list those and I talk about those on the videos, you know, uh, costume jewelry designers like Ben Amun and, Hendy, and Heidi Dose. And of course, uh, the uh, costume pieces by great makers like Chanel and Oscar de la Renta and others. So that's really something that I think you should start to look for. And of course, me telling you what I know will be valuable coming up is going to help you to, of course, up your game when you're reselling or building your own collection. So that's great. I found a 14K with HA Kirby label, love not stick pin with seed pearl in a blue box. So that's a Goodwill blue box where you, you pay one particular price and then you get all this stuff and you can treasure hunt out of it. What can I, what can I find his work is normally more figural? Oh, what you can find of his work is normally more figural. It tests 14K. Okay, so don't forget that artists, typically you want to see a mature and characteristic style, right? So if that artist's work is always more figural, then the pieces that are more figural is what we think of when we look at their works of art and we say, okay, that says that particular artist to me, right? Um, if you have something that's out of, out of favor or out of the ordinary for an artist, considering his subject matter or the way his works usually look, then usually that value is not as much. The value for that piece is not as much as the ones that we always recognize. You know, it's sort of like, um, it's sort of like the great photographer, American photographer, Ansel Adams. 
uh, you would look and you would say, I expect the Ansel Adams photograph to be a landscape. When it's not a landscape, it's not as characteristic work typically, and it's not, of course, as valuable. Uh, it will be more valuable than other works that he does in different subject matter. So if it's supposed to be figural, you know, the, of course, collectors want to have the characteristic and what they expect type of work. I hope that's clear. My guests are here. Everything's unscripted. I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. Let's see what we got. All right. Okay. Let's see. What what have we got there? I can't see your faces. Let's see your faces too. <laughs> let's talk about this. Um, let's talk about this paperweight. Looks like it's uncontrolled bubbles in a crystal paperweight. Hi, what's your name? Hi, I'm Ma Molly from California. Hi, Molly. Nice to see you, hon. So nice how did you, you how did you acquire this? I got this at an estate sale. And right. it came it came with three. So there's two about this size, and then there's one a little smaller. All right. So when you say this size, is it, I mean, how big is it? Can you give me it's an idea? It's two in 12 inches round and four and a half inches high. So, so significantly tall. Right? Yes. Significantly yeah. tall. Is it marked in any way? You know, I will, I tried to look on the flat part of the bottom and I haven't found a mark yet. Okay. So this is very good, Molly. Molly from California realizes that if you're going to look for a mark on a paperweight, it's probably in the flat area of the bottom. And if it's not right in the center of that flat area, it's going to be around that curve, right? Around okay, the yeah. you have to pretty You have to look. Sometimes they're not marked like that. Sometimes they have a label put on them. And of course, the label gets lost over time. So it's significant in terms of weight. It's a nice characteristic piece. How did you acquire it? I, I got it at, at an estate sale. Okay. And how much did you pay? Five. For dollar. all three? Nope. Just this one was the, the big, bigger two were five and the smaller one was two. Okay, well, that's still good. So around uh, 10, what is it, $12 for three? That's pretty good. So um, about $4 each. So that particular piece, here's what I don't like about it with respect to what to look for. I don't like when you have big bubbles, small bubbles, all different size. I like either controlled bubbles or as few bubbles as possible, okay? And the reason why I say I like that is I'm always looking for quality. And I want you guys to identify quality. I still think you did well on this. This piece obviously is... You know, the typical paperweights that they're mass producing in large numbers, probably worth about $25. So you did very well for your three or four or five dollar investment. Good for you. That's good. But when you're looking for the quality in paperweights, I want you to know the names of the big paperweight uh, manufacturers. The Muranos make paperweights and Canthanis makes paperweights and other paperweight sort of um, artisans. And then, of course, the studio artist in, in glass will also make paperweights. That one, I would say about $25. So you did well at the estate sale, but I would like to see controlled bubbles or just one bubble, but not all these different ones because you can see that they're making them quickly. Yeah, so, okay. Pretty good, pretty good though, Molly, pretty good. Thank you. So tell me, brownies or blondies? Brownies. Brownies. Nice to see you, hon. It's nice to see you too. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Good to be with all of you. So yeah, when you're looking at certain types of... Um, Certain types of objects within a collecting category. So, for example, you've got glass, right? And that's your collecting category. That's your big umbrella. And then you're saying, well, I like glass vases and I like, gla I like glassware, like stemware, and I also like paperweights. I want you to basically start to learn what are good, what do good paperweights look like and what should they look like? Then you can drill down and say, all right, a Murano paperweight should have this, these characteristics, and a Canthanis paperweight should have these characteristics, and a lamp work paperweight should have these characteristics. And you start to sort of become, you know, really a critic. And you start to understand, well, I want to look for the best quality and I want to look for the piece that has, of course, these particular traits. And as you do that, you're going to get empowered. And that's what I'm trying to do for you. That's what I want you to do. Because once you can identify quality, you're going to leave all the junk there. You're going to recognize the good stuff when other people's can't. You, when other people can't, you can get it for a lower price and flip it for your own gain. So again, this is all about having you identify it. How do you do it? You got to get the loop. The loop, of course, is on the specials and shop page at drlaurieV.com. I do get compensation when you buy 
any of the products on the page, but basically the loop is a money magnet. You can use this loop. It has a magnification. It also has the light on it and you can utilize that and you can say, okay, I'm going to be able to, in fact, there's the light and I can be, be, be able to, in fact, um, find those characteristics, those quality characteristics that Dr. Lori keeps talking about. But, you know, if you haven't gotten it or if you haven't gotten one for your pocketbook and your husband and your pocket and you're this, you know, go get it. Hi, Dr. Lori. I was given four collectible ducks similar to the ones you have on the table. Can you give me an idea of the value it could be? Sure, April. First of all, it's going to depend on the duck decoy. These are sculptures. These were not intended to be, in fact, decoys. They were never used for duck hunting. They were meant to be sculptures. Somebody was a woodworker and liked to make these kinds of things. Um, so you have to identify whether or not you're dealing with a piece of fine art or whether or not you're dealing with an actual duck decoy that's used for function, functional use, right, for hunting. So that's one of the things you have to know the difference, right? So value is going to depend on the object. You can always, all of you can always send a picture to drlaurieV.com. It says find values right there on the website. And then you click on send a photo, send a photo, fill up, fill out the web form, uh, send it to me and I will take a look at it. If it's not worth the cost of the appraisal, I'll get back to you for free and say your piece is not worth the cost of the appraisal. Here's what it is. So that's what I want you guys to have an understanding. You always have an opportunity to let these eyes look at your object. So that's great. But yeah, so it'll depend on size. It'll depend on the quality, of course, of the carving. It will depend on use. You know, some of those duck depoy, decoys, even if they've been used and used and used, still bring good money. There are a lot of people who collect uh, duck decoys or duck sculptures. It just depends. So thanks for answer, asking that question. Um, it's always fun when they connect to what's happening here on the table. And, you know, the studio folks change this all the time. So, hi, it's Dr. Lori. How are you? I want to look at all those all those glasses that are sitting there. Hi, what's your name? It's got it's sort hi. of like a group of glasses. And Yes, ma'am. I found hi, these silver glasses the other day. At wait, the a second, wait a second, wait a second. What's your name, sweetie? Oh, sorry, I'm Olivia. Hi, Olivia. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Eastern Tennessee. Eastern Tennessee. Okay. So you said you had these glasses and you called them something, but I was talking over you. What, Mosier? Yes, yes ma'am. Culver glasses. Oh, Culver glasses. Yeah. Look at those. Those are great. I also have some of the tall ones. Great. So how did you get them? Well, I, were, I, um, I go to a thrift shop to resell and one of the workers kind of hooked me up a little bit and told me that they were behind the counter. Um, and uh, I paid a hundred dollars for them though. I know they're yeah. expensive. A little expensive, darling. Yeah. A little expensive. So hold. So hang on a second. How many did you get? Thank you for all of your support, guys. I appreciate all your support. Watching, super stickers, sharing, you know, whatever it might be. How many did you get there for $100? There's seven tall ones and there's eight smaller ones. All right. Okay. Okay. So for the eight smaller ones that basically have that flare, right? Sort of almost like high bulb glasses. Yeah, those. I would say you probably could get $75 to $100 back for that group. Okay. Okay. So you can get those back, that get that money back, right? And yeah. then how many of the tall ones? Seven. Seven of the tall ones. All right. So seven of the tall ones, you probably could get another, uh, I'd probably go another 75 So yeah, you're going to probably bring back... 50 more percent, you're going to probably bring back about 60% more than what you paid. Okay. So not bad, not bad, but wow, I'd like to see it a lot lower if you can do it. Yes, so this friend of yours at the thrift store, let's talk a little bit about this friend and how much of a friend this person really is, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, well, I looked online while, while I was there and someone was selling five of the bigger ones for like, just five of them for like $200. On okay, but that's a list price, sweetheart. Right. I have to right. I have to go buy a, you know, that's a list price and it's fine to look them up online. That's good. Whether you're using your cell phone, great. But you have to remember a list price is not the actual resale price and the markets change a lot. I would say you probably could command close to 175 for the whole group right? Mm -hmm. To 200 for the whole group. If you are going to sell them, I would resell them in groups of four. So this is okay. your reselling tip. Okay. Because you're saying you have seven. Okay. Yeah. So as opposed to like sort of get rid of all seven at once, I think you might want to do it in groups of four 
because four is, okay, I can have a dinner party with a couple and another couple, so four. And then you might also be able to sell four and four together, the two different sizes together, so eight. And then you are going to have extras, but then you can bump up the price a little bit for the, well, I have one. And if you've got seven and you need to have that one, I can fill that in sort of like a replacement. Make sense? Yes, sir. Okay, great, honey. Now, where do you sell? Do you sell on Etsy or eBay or all over or Facebook Marketplace? What do you do? Um, I've only been selling on eBay and okay. um, on Instagram. I've, oh. Yeah, I haven't been able to figure out where the best place to sell like higher price items like this is. Okay, so I want you to check out Etsy. I want you to check out Ruby Lane. I want you to check out some of those other sites like Cherish.com, even for decorative arts like that. But for the most part, um, eBay will be fine if you're successful there. Hey, you know, don't rock the boat. It's working fine for you there. That's good. Um, but also remember that you have to think about how you're going to market it. So keyword searches, SEO, all going to be important. And it's good to see you. Good to see you from Tennessee. Hey, blondies or, or brownies, sweetie? Uh, brownies. All right. So be careful. A hundred bucks is a lot of money. You might want to try to see whether or not you can negotiate them down the next time, but I'm glad you got a lot for that hundred bucks. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right. Nice to see you, Olivia. Yeah. So a couple of different things with respect to that. You have to think about how am I going to now market these and don't think that a list price is the actual value. All right. That's not the appraised value because you don't know who that person is who's listing it way up here or way down here. You don't know what they're actually saying to that. So that's basically what you're saying. You know, you're saying you got to go to the sole completed eBay listings and it's not the full market. So people who say this, I know you're trying to be helpful, but that's not representative of the whole market because you, again, you don't know if those people let that particular item that they listed and sold for too low. I've said this many, many times. They may have let it actually go for too low a value or too low a price. So don't just go, oh, I'm going to look at sold on eBay and I'm going to know what it is because it doesn't reflect the whole market. There are people who are paying a lot more for individual items on other sites than, of course, what you're seeing in sold items on using eBay as an example. So please, let's learn about what the quality is so you can get top dollar. And a lot of the times, if you are only utilizing that one sort of get, you know, get the information quick source, you're probably not getting all the information you need. So, you know, uh, be careful about that. Be careful about that. All right. So anyway, uh, that's, that's what we're seeing. Oh, well, Cynthia doesn't like the new format. You're all entitled to your opinion. I like to choose. I like to choose. And I like everybody to see what options we've got, right? A lot of wonderful pieces that we've got here, of course, and Ask Dr. Lori live. I'm so glad that you're enjoying, uh, oh. again, all the information that I provide, too. So hold up those objects. Let's see what you've got, folks. Hold up those objects. Let's see what you've got. Let's take a look at this um, plate. Let's take a look at this flower plate here. This one? Yeah, let's see it. Can you hold your camera horizontally? Yeah, hang on. Let me flip you. <laughs> All right. How'd you acquire this plate? Will you back up, please? Um, it was my mother's. What's I your name? Oh, my name's Linda from Texas. Linda, honey, I need you to back up. You're way too close to your camera. Back yourself and the plate up. And then put the plate in front of your face. Hang on. Hang on. Okay, now we can do this. All Is that right. better? Yeah, it's better. So tell me, um, is there a mark on the back of this plate, which is a serving plate? It has handles, of course, as part of it. It's hand painted. And is it marked on the back? It says Italy. It says Italy on it. Right. So this piece yes, was your mom. This piece was your mom's dates to probably the 1960s or 1970s. Right there is good. Try not to move it. Try not to move mm -hmm. it. There you go. So this is very characteristic of the late 20th century Italian, hand-painted, very dramatic. When you th see things like this, the ceramics from Italy, it usually has a relatively white beige color of the background ground is what it's called. And then the hand painting is very dramatic like the Italians. Uh, a very nice piece. I'm guessing it's about 10 inches in diameter. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, any any chips or damage, scratches? Um, there is a chip right here on this handle. Yeah, right because here. that it tends to be a very, very um, thick uh, ceramic. So chips are oftentimes typical in Italian ceramics like this. In that condition, about $30 with the chip. And now tell me, okay. do you like... 
Do you like blondies or brownies? No, both, but I prefer brownies. Okay, thanks for answering my question of the day, too. Thank That's you, great. Nice you. to see you, Linda. My pleasure. You so too. it's a nice piece. A couple of things about those. When you see the handles are part of the actual plate, right? It's not like it's uh, something that's added on after the fact. When you see that, you know that you're dealing with a serving plate. What are they serving? If it's circular, usually pastry, sometimes cookies, um, those types of things. Usually it, and if there is all kinds of decoration in the middle of the plate, it can be also be a cabinet plate. So it could be for decoration or display as well as, of course, other, um, as well as, of course, uh, other uses. Uh, how do you look for a valuable decoy? Hey, good question. So a couple of different things about valuable decoys. There's a lot of information that dates decoys. And I talk about decoys on my research pages at drlaurieV.com. You can see it right on the website, drlaurieV.com. And basically, uh, when you get to the website, it'll say research, hit those, and you can see all kinds of um, information about duck decoys and other things. Decoys will have actually not only the carving of the actual piece, and sometimes they're made of different materials. Sometimes they're made of cork. Sometimes they're made of um, even a styrofoam. Sometimes they're made of plastic. And sometimes they are, of course, carved wood. Oftentimes they'll have weights on the bottom. You can actually see the weights to keep, of course, the um, duck decoy um, moving around, moving on the pond the proper way so it simulates a duck. Because remember, a decoy is trying to convince a duck that that decoy is a duck, you know? So that's what you're trying to look for. Also remember if you're looking for uh, different types of ducks. So this is how you can identify um, a duck to where that duck would actually be. So a different breed, if you will, or a different type of duck to a different part of the country. Is it a duck from the Chesapeake Bay? Is it a duck from, of course, um, up in the Great Lakes region? Is it a duck somewhere in the Finger Lakes of New York? It just depends. So you, when you start to identify and learn more about different types of ducks, right, then you're going to be able to identify where that decoy originated. Oftentimes decoys are also signed, but look for the weights on the underside. I always try to tell you what to look for. There's so much chock full of information in these videos so you can know what's what too. Can I see this necklace? Let's take a look at this necklace. Oh, hi, what, hi, what's your Hello. name? Where you, hi, what's your name? Where are you calling from? I'm Beverly. I'm from Farmington, Missouri. Hi, Beverly. I like this necklace. It's looking like a Coro or a Lister or maybe even a Kramer. It's Trafari. Really? It's Is got, it marked yeah. Trafari? It's got the tr original Trafari label. Wonderful. You can, and then it's marked Trafari okay. here. I also have a bracelet set. Okay. How'd you acquire it? An auction. Do you, have a piece of paper? Do you have a piece of white paper? I have black paper. Would uh, that help? Get a piece of paper so we can actually see it. Because I've got a, I, I don't know. You got you got to clean the got to clean the 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 lens. <laughs> yeah, my yeah, lighting in my house. Well, you is... know, I mean, I'm trying to give you an appraisal, darling, and you're like, yeah. Oh, I don't, I don't really need any right the spot the there. Lens. I mean, come on. <laughs> All right, put Does that, that behind it. And let me really look at it. Put it in front of your face. Okay. Then up toward your camera. All right. I like it. Late 1950s, early 1960s, Trafari. Best way to get a lot of costume jewelry um, uh, evaluated and appraised by me is a 30-minute video call, the specials and shop page at drlaurieV.com. That set is worth $275, dates to the early 1960s. How much did you pay? Where'd you get it? I actually paid about a buck for it. Um, I got a whole bunch of, I got the auction, I got a whole bunch of jewelry from a bunch of different auctions and a lot okay. of it together. It was about $54. So you think this was about a dollar? You think this is about a dollar? Okay. Yeah. And as long as there's no missing elements, there's no missing crystals or no missing things, that's what this, we're looking for. 275 I was going to if, price it about... As long as long as there is no there are no missing elements, Trafari is going to be there for the set. Now that's not just the necklace; that's for the set. Hey, right. blondies or brownies, hun? Uh, 